Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi has resigned just one day after being snubbed by coalition partners in a vote of confidence in the Senate. Speaking to Parliament this morning, Draghi thanked lawmakers and stated he was going to meet with President Sergio Mattarella. In light of the vote expressed yesterday by the Senate of the Republic, I ask that the session be suspended because I'm going to the President of the Republic to communicate my decisions. Draghi will stay in office until new elections are called, which could take place as soon as September. Well, for more on the growing political turmoil, our correspondent Giorgio Orlandi joins me now from Rome. So, Giorgio, he hasn't hung around. Um, take us through the steps that have led to his resignation. Hi, Mariam. Well, back on Tuesday, it seems that uh, the situation was going to improve a little when we heard that an increased number of senators was ready to back Draghi's coalition. And we also heard that Draghi himself was going uh, to give his government a second chance. But what followed next uh, uh, clearly showed a different scenario and clearly has taken everyone by surprise. And it all started when the centre-right bloc tabled its own uh, political demands, a little bit like what happened with the Five Star Movement a few days earlier, requesting a cabinet reshuffle, requesting that Five Star lawmakers should be excluded from the current coalition, something that clearly Mario Draghi wasn't going uh, to implement. It was pretty uh, clear yesterday when he said that the only way forward is um, if there is unity and provided that all political parties are ready to renew that political pact that he said has kept us uh, together. So clearly that wasn't uh, the case. And yesterday was an historic day. Mario Draghi himself looked quite tense uh, when he actually addressed Parliament. An historic day that clearly marked the end of his government, only after 18 months since that government had been sworn in. Marianne? Now, Georgia, Draghi was, of course, seen as the safe pair of hands. So where does this all leave Italy now? Well, as we know, today, uh, President Mattarella's office issued a statement confirming that uh, Draghi reiterated his uh, resignation that the government will stay on to manage current affairs. But clearly, the country is set for early elections, elections that could take place as early as next autumn. There's already a date for that, the 2nd of October. And now that also means uh, that much-needed reforms are going to be delayed, in particular those reforms that are needed uh, to receive the rest of the money from the EU's covid recovery fund uh, and we need we know as well that uh, Italy is set to receive the largest share uh, of those uh, funds and there's a package of measures uh, that has to be approved within a certain deadline. Uh, recent polls suggest that Italy's next prime minister could uh, be from the centre-right bloc. Those polls actually uh, gave Brothers of Italy one of the main centre, well far-right rather, uh, parties in Italy around 23 percent of the vote which is quite significant and in fact, the leader, Giorgia Meloni, uh, could become, perhaps according to political analysts, Italy's next uh, prime minister. But what we noticed yesterday in Parliament is that uh, all political forces have already embarked on their uh, political campaign. And also, it's, it's worth reminding ourselves of the fact that under a centre-right government, Italy's alignment would be much different from what it is now, especially with regards to its relations with Europe. It would be less pro European that it is now. And so the, this could become a little bit of a game changer, especially when it comes to having to deal with the war in Ukraine, the energy crisis in the next few months.